Good morning, everyone. Don't I look amazing? Hello, me and all my realness and glory. Um, today I have a rare day off. Like I told you earlier, a lot of the theater professors and theater students are at a conference this week, so classes were canceled today. And I don't work on Thursdays, so I have an actual day off today. Yes, I'm working on homework right now, but I'm gonna go see Derek for lunch play with the bunny in his classroom, and then I'm gonna come home and hopefully do something a little more fun for me and the babes. These kitties down here, look at that one. They're playing with the laser. Get it, Edmund, get it. Sometimes he just has too much energy, so I have to turn on the laser because he's pouncing nothing. Hi, everyone. I'm subbing again today. I have a special guest, though, I'm with me today. Oh! They knew I was coming. Okay, you're so good. <laughs> but we have another special guest. His name is Conrad. You figured out his name? Yeah. Someone said, did anyone feed Conrad today? I was like, Conrad the bunny. Oh so his name is Conrad. <laughs> You're going to hold him. Conrad. Hello. Hello. Guys, bad news. The cage is zip tied. <laughs> Liesl's freaking searching for a new zip tie so she can cut that one, hold the bunny, and then re-zip tie it. I so. want to hold the bunny. I mean, being a teacher, it makes sense if you had a class pet like that, that you would zip tie the cage because yeah, the kids nice. probably just always want to hold it or always opening the cage. Well, Conrad zip tied in, so maybe if we can find a new I one. Die. I <laughs> She's so excited. We gotta make sure there's scissors in this classroom. Well, I'm sure there is somewhere. Open that second drawer down No, there. I, I bet don't want to. <laughs> you already told me what's in there. So I opened I her drawer to it. find a book that the kids were asking for. There's a stuffed baby duck in there. Let me show you. There it is. <laughs> it's, I opened it and I was like, oh, the dead baby duck. So Liesl's on the hunt for scissors now. So she can hold this bunny. Honey, don't be bitten. Don't get bitten. Well, worse things have happened than being bitten by a bunny. It's a lot of craft things. Any scissors? Aha! Scissors! Uh -huh. Jeez. I'm so This probably isn't a very good thing to do. <laughs> if I get fired as a substitute, everyone just keep, have, it on, have it on record that it was not my fault. Should I not? I don't care what you do. No one's gonna know. Well, all of YouTube is gonna You're know. right. I say no one's gonna know. Yeah, 2,200 of you are gonna know. I'm afraid someone's gonna like walk in. Probably. You're scaring poor Conrad. I'm sorry, Conrad. Oh, geez. We did it. <laughs> We're so naughty. Don't worry, everyone. We're not stealing the bunny. My wife just really likes animals and she wants to hold it or touch it. Honey. I don't know how mommy that We need do. a French Angora bunny. Look how fluffy that thing is. Or an English Angora. You can't even see that one's face. <gasps> Guys, fluffy bunnies are the best. How's he doing? He doesn't want to be held. I tried to pick oh, him up and he didn't him? like that. Oh, no one really touches him. Oh, he's getting so mad. Okay, close the cage. Close the cage. Okay. Close the cage. We're sorry, comrade. Oh dear. We're sorry. He wanted to escape. I saw it in his eyes. All right. I just wanted to pet you. Here you go. Redo it. I'll put you back in now. Well, have all your dreams come true today? Yeah, I touched that. Fluffy bunny. <laughs> he is pretty cute. To try and do this the way so Conrad. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh, hi. hi. Hello. Look it. Guys, I just realized something. I don't know if we have ever actually talked about this in the vlog, like directly, but I am a seamstress. <laughs> I feel like there have been clues, like I work in a costume shop, I sew mermaid tails my whole life. I got a new dress form for Christmas. Um, if you saw when we like set up my sewing room or like when we were cleaning out the room for the nursery, which is currently my sewing room, you would have seen all my sewing stuff. But I don't know that we've ever actually talked to you about the fact that that's what I do. I am a costume design major and I love to sew. And that's, I mean, that's my big hobby is that I love to sew things. So here's just some of the things that I have in my collection. I love to make dresses. Um, and this is part of my Disney princess collection. So this is my Ariel dress that I wore for Halloween this year. This is my Merida dress that I've got, that I've made. Um, this dress, I actually made, it was my like modern take on Glinda the Good Witch. Wore that for Halloween one year. I've got 
um, this like Grecian kind of like the muses from Hercules dress. This is my Anna costume. It's all just hanging up on this hanger, but I've got my cloak with my Anna stuff. Here's my Elsa dress. Um, so these are all things that I have made because sewing is my hobby. And I just wasn't sure if we'd ever like established to you just how much I love sewing. So today on this lovely day off, I haven't had a day off in forever, right? I was gonna get started on my girls quilts, which is something else that I'm not sure we have talked about on the channel very much. And it's kind of, it's a really cool story. It's really special. So I wanted to share it with you. In October, first week in October, oh, there's the kitty. He loves perching on my sewing table. Um, so in the beginning of October, my grandma passed away and I mean, sad as always of course when a grandparent dies that's not something that we enjoy but when my grandmother passed I got probably more than my fair share of things from her um, I've got several pieces of jewelry um, that she had given to me beforehand um, and a couple more pieces that I got after she passed and then I actually ended up with like all of her cookie cutters I got a couple bread pans um, her chocolate molds and sucker molds, um, cause we all know I also love to bake and make candy. Um, I also got the most beautiful vintage sewing machine that kind of just like, I, it wasn't like anything was left to me in the will, I guess I should say. We all just kind of got to like claim things. It was kind of like, if you're interested, let us know. And if more than one people, more than one person wants it, they like drew names for it. So we also got like a couple paintings. My great grandma, my great grandpa did lots of painting. She had this beautiful vintage sewing machine and my uncle was like, hey, we have this. I know that you're, that Liesl sews. Would she be interested? And so I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So I got that. And then I also got a box. My sister went down and just boxed up all of my grandma's old patterns and fabric. So I just had this massive box that was just full of patterns and fabric. And I just kind of stuck it in my sewing room and just kind of like left it. And then fast forward to December. When I first, well, I guess when I first got the fabric and stuff, when my grandma first passed away, we had just barely found out we were pregnant. So we found out literally like just a couple days before my grandma passed away. So we didn't know we were having twins at that point. Um, fast forward to December when we know we're having twins, but we don't know genders yet. We just know that we've got twins. We weren't even sure if they were identical or fraternal at that point. And I was getting ready for Christmas and I was sewing the aprons that we gave to Derek's mom and sisters made out of his grandma's fabric. She passed away in June. So I was making these aprons and I needed some fabric to go on the back of one of them. And I was like, I don't think I have anything. I'm gonna check my the box of my grandma stuff and see if she just has a solid white or cream that I can put as a backing on this apron. So I started going through this box and it was full of like unfinished like quilt blocks and stuff. So there was like a quilt block that my great aunt had started that was like a house. And then there were a couple of quilts. There's this great like 70s like black and yellow and orange and lime green quilt topper in there. In these bags, so you had like the quilt topper and the backing for it. Like she was ready to make these into quilts and just never came across it. And then, I found two matching pink quilts. So again, at this point, we didn't know if we were having boys or girls, but I pulled out these quilts and I've got these two matching pink and green quilts. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, this is amazing. So I was like, if we have girls, I'm gonna finish these quilts that my grandma started um, to give to my girls. So when we found out we were having twin girls, um, I mean, we were excited, of course, because we have the first granddaughters and we're, you know, the winner's there. But it meant that I could finish these quilts that my grandma started to give to my girls. Um, and my girls are never going to know my grandma, but it is sweet to me that they're going to have a piece of her, something that came from her that they can love and cherish for their whole lives. So today, I was just going to pull these quilts out and see kind of what is left to be done to them, see how much of the blocks on the toppers are sewn together and it really I really think that and the only thing I'm gonna have to do is put the batting in between them and bind them which is great because I'm not a quilter so I was just gonna kind of pull out and see what I could do to them today <laughs> Oh my gosh, 
gosh, look what I just found on the corner of this quilt that I had never noticed before. It says, with love, mother. That's adorable. Now I feel a little bad. Apparently my grandma was making these for one of my aunts. Whoops, I don't know which aunt. So sorry aunts that I'm stealing your quilts. Does this one have one too? This one doesn't. What am I gonna do? <laughs> Only the green one has the square that says with love, mother. Do you think they're supposed to go together? What was the intent for this quilt? What do you think? What do we do about this? Guys, I just figured out why math matters. So this is what I wanna do for the quilt backing. I wanna do four triangles because I hate when there's just like a weird seam down the back of a quilt, you know? So I was like, maybe if I divide it into triangles. So I measured out my quilts and I figured out the dimensions I would need. And how did I do that, you ask? Because A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm so smart, right? Figured it out. Cha-ching. But then I was like, oh, I only have eight yards of fabric. This would require almost nine. But again, geometry. If I did the triangle standing side by side, so if I did 70, 70, 90, 90, I wouldn't have enough fabric. But if I flip the triangles and do 70, 70, 90, 90, I should have enough. Math, guys. You actually need it, even when you hate it and you're an arts major. Math. Guys, I did it. I made math that works. I have the back of one of the quilts cut out. And look at all this extra fabric. I did real math. Now I can cut out the other one and I'll have extra fabric to make cute little throw pillows to put on our rocker. guys i made it home finally but before i go inside i have to tell you the story so i was warned by like five kids that that class was the most terrible class and i was like okay one kid was like yeah there was even some kids that got in a fight last time when a sub was here and i was like oh well that's comforting i didn't have high hopes so i said okay i just gotta demand respect first off because normally when i sub i like joke around with them i'm like haha like i'm pretty cool right I knew this class I couldn't do that otherwise they would just try and manipulate and walk all over me because high school kids do that the kids like file in file in the bell rings I stand up and I'm like okay like so authoritative and I'm just like listen I'm gonna be honest with you a bunch of your classmates have come to me and said that some of you are very disrespectful and I'm not gonna stand for that and I just like put my foot down and I was like okay let's see what happens well there's this group of kids that just kept trying to like I don't know if they were necessarily doing it on purpose they were just trying to impress each other that's all high school high school kids do that act like that they are just trying to impress their peers around them I don't know why people do it but they do it like put my foot down hardcore and I say this is your assignment I expect you to get it done and this group of boys just like didn't do anything they were just in the back saying all sorts of curse words which in a high school setting, I don't stand for that. In any school setting, I don't stand for that. So I was like, boys, I don't care how you talk at home, but when you're in this classroom, don't use that language. And they were like, oh, sorry, sorry. And I was like, okay, great. Maybe I got through to them that time. The language died down, but they still just kept like talking and talking, not doing their assignment. So finally I was like, I gotta do something to help these kids get this done. So I was like, okay, just so you know, this assignment is your exit ticket, which means they have to hand it in before they can leave the classroom. And a bunch of kids were like, <gasps> but none of these kids ended up like doing their assignment still. So I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what do I need to do to help these kids realize that like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. That's the hardest thing about teaching is that there are kids that just have their attitudes and have their personalities and getting through to those you have to be so specific to that single kid 
and I didn't know how to reach these boys. So I plugged in the second half, or the movie that we were watching the second half, I plugged that in, and they had a worksheet to do with that. And I said, here are my expectations, there's no talking during the movie, you're gonna do this worksheet and get it done. I was like, you only have 50 minutes left of class and the entire time you're gonna watch this movie. This is the easiest assignment, it gives you the answers if you just pay attention to the movie, like do it. So I tried to help them see that it like wasn't so intense that they could do it, but these boys just kept, they were so terrible at following directions. <laughs> and even at the first of class, I was like, listen, if you follow directions the first time, we're not gonna have a problem. They just didn't, they just didn't. So I had to pause the movie like four times because they kept like standing up, going to play with the bunny, like throwing papers at each other. And finally, the fifth time, I just, I just, oh, I was so frustrated, like insanely frustrated that these kids were just so disrespectful. Like I've had it happen to me before, but this time I was like, I'm a little bit scared to be in this classroom right now because that's the first time I've had to deal with high school kids acting that way. Like junior highs act that way all day long, but I can, like, like junior high kids are scared of you. This high school kids, these high school kids were not afraid of me. So I was like, okay, here we go. So I like kept pausing the movie and I was like, boys, I won't ask you again. Sit down and do this assignment. And they were always like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And they would sit down. None of them had the worksheet that they were supposed to be doing. So the fourth time, I think it was the fourth time, I paused that movie so many times, I don't even remember anymore. The fourth time I paused the movie, I just waited. I was like, everyone needs a worksheet, go get it. We're not gonna start the movie until everyone has a worksheet. So these like boys like go up. And anyway, sorry, the story is getting really long. So I'm gonna wrap it up. It's almost over anyway. So these boys are just not listening to a word that I'm saying, not doing their work. And I was like, fine, it's not my grade, it's yours. I don't, I don't really care. But it was very disrespectful for them to be like yelling at each other while this movie's going, while other people are trying to do this assignment. So finally the fifth time I paused the movie and I was like, boys, I've said it five times to you, like do this assignment. If I don't have it by the end of the class period, then I don't know what we're gonna do. And the one kid, the one kid looked me in the eye and was like, I'm leaving no matter what, you can't stop me. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got on my phone and I gave the school a call and I said, hello, is there a secretary that I can talk to? Because they have like students answer their phones, which I think is weird, but is there a, student, or a secretary that I can talk to? And she was like, yeah, hold on. And the secretary gets on the phone. She said, how can I help you? And I said, hi, this is Mr. Sorensen, and I'm subbing this class. I need an administrator down here just to help me out with some things. And she was like, okay, I'll send some down. So like five minutes later, the administration shows up. I think it was both assistant principals. I don't know where the principal has been. He like hasn't been there or just isn't there. No one knows. It was the both assistant principals and they like take me out to the hall, I explain the situation to them. And they were like, do you think if we talk to this one individual who talked back to you, if we talk to him that the whole problem with that group would stop? And I was like, oh, absolutely. Cause he was really the issue. He was the one that was egging everyone on, trying to impress people. Anyway, moral of the story, I had to call administration to my classroom today and it was the most intense thing that has ever happened to me like so much adrenaline and it was it was insane. So here's to more of that in the future. Ugh. Hi everyone. So I got the quilt backers, the, yeah, the, the backs of the quilts all cut out and ready to go. And now I am just sitting here emotionally supporting my husband while he applies for teaching jobs. <laughs> 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 And now is the time to seize the day. Send out the call and join the fray. <laughs> Guys, Newsies was really good. It was the best. It was so good. Newsies was really good. And for 15 bucks, like what? We just saw a Broadway show. A Broadway. cast. For $15. Jeremy Jordan. I loathe him. Derek gets really mad. Number one. Liesl has a crush on him. That cannot be. Number two, he's really good. And I'm really jealous. So, Newsies, really good. Check your local theaters to see if they have it tomorrow. I mean, when you watch this, it will be today. Today and tomorrow. Friday and Saturday are the only other two days that they're doing this. Otherwise, you're gonna have to wait for it to come out on DVD. Sorry about it, but it's really good. Go see it if you have to. Thanks for coming with us today. We had a good day, all except for that little incident at my school today. Other than that, it was great. Liesl did a lot of great things with those quilts. 
did a few great things. <laughs> I did some good math. Uh, great math. That's all that matters. Okay, well, I'm really tired, so we're gonna end this video. We'll see you tomorrow. Have courage and be kind! Bye!